Young Earth creationist leaders have a problem trying to explain away the speed of light and how it interferes with their theory that the universe is only 6,000 years old. Both real science and the Bible gives us overwhelming evidence that the universe is billions of years old. But again, Ken Ham, Jason Lyle, and the rest of the Young Earth teachers carefully avoid the scriptures that conflict with their theory and have invented a bogus science called operational science to try to explain away this very damaging evidence. The scientific fact is this. Light travels at 186,282 miles per second, or about 671 million miles per hour. One light year, which is actually a measurement of distance and not time, is the distance light can travel in one year and is about 6 trillion miles. The Andromeda Galaxy is approximately 2.54 million light years from Earth. That means the light we are seeing today from Andromeda left that galaxy 2,540,000 years ago. The problem from young Earth creationists is this. If the entire universe was created 6,000 years ago, then light began traveling from Andromeda at that time and headed towards Earth. It has traveled for 6,000 years. The leading edge of that light should still be 2,534,000 light years away from Earth. We should not be seeing that light yet. These simple facts would dictate that if we are seeing light from stars billions of light years away, then it's safe to assume that the universe has been in existence for billions of years to allow that light to reach our Earth. That's the logical conclusion. But then again, we've determined that most of what Answers in Genesis teaches is not logical. So they must explain this problem to their followers, and they try several methods. The first method is to suggest that light traveled faster in the past than it does now. One of the uh, earlier scientific possibilities that uh, supposes that the light got here by natural means was that the hypothesis of what they now call sea decay and this is the idea that the speed of light may have been much greater in the past. And this is a really interesting idea. You see, the, the idea is that we're, we're questioning the velocity in that little equation, the V. The speed of light might have been much, much greater, in which case it could have traversed an enormous distance in a relatively short amount of time, only today slowing down to its present rate. You see, the distant starlight argument assumes that that light speed has always been constant, but perhaps it hasn't been. What do you mean, perhaps it hasn't? Jason Lyle offers no evidence or biblical references to back up this claim. This statement is pure speculation, and speculation has no place in establishing any doctrine. Even other Answers in Genesis staff agree with that. If you're going to make a great claim, you have to support it with real evidence, not fraud, not mistakes and not by omitting the evidence. Jason Lyle contradicts himself in another lecture on another subject. This lecture is on God's character. We rely upon a certain degree of orderliness in nature, which we'll call uniformity. The Bible tells us conditions change. But the way in which God upholds the universe, what we would call the laws of nature, do not arbitrarily change. Gravity will work the same on Friday as it did on Monday. But the conditions, are ch conditions change. It might be raining on Friday and sunny on Monday. Conditions change, but the laws of nature do not arbitrarily change. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about uniformity, like the laws of nature. Jason Lyle is correct in this lecture. The laws of nature do not change over time. Other answers in Genesis staff, like Dr. Werner Gitt, teach that the laws of nature have been consistent since the creation of the universe. Laws of nature are universally valid. They are valid in Australia, they are valid in Germany, in America, on the moon, and in the complete universe. Laws of nature do not vary in time. It's also a very important statement. So why does Jason Lyle's statement in his lecture on the speed of light contradict his other teachings on the laws of nature? Even Lyle teaches that two contradictory statements pose a problem for the presenter. Uh, laws of logic stem from God's nature, 
And uh, God, we're made in God's image, and so we, we instinctively know these laws of logic. We act on them, like the law of non-contradiction. Now, you all, even if you have never heard of the term before, you immediately know that that's true, that contradictions, two contradictory statements cannot both be true. If I told you my car is in the parking lot and it's not in the parking lot, you wouldn't rush out to say, oh, yeah, I want to see a car that's there and not there. You would immediately assume that, assume that what I told you is false, and you'd be right to do that because that's a law of logic that cannot be violated. This is another example of how young earth creationists modify their teachings in order for their presentation to fit their young earth theory. And they just can't explain how light from stars billions of light years away is reaching earth today. There is nothing in the scriptures that even vaguely suggests that God designed light to travel at different rates of speed at different times. But there are scriptures that overwhelmingly prove that God created light traveling at 186,000 miles per second, and that speed has been consistent since it was created. The teachers at Answers in Genesis will never read these scriptures to their audiences. Never. We read some compelling evidence in Jeremiah 31 and 35 that reads, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. The original Hebrew word for ordinances in the ordinances of the moon and stars is kucha, which means to be appointed. The second word, ordinances, in Hebrew is koch, which is a decree or a fixed law or statute. It also means an unwaverable standard. Jeremiah 33 and 25 states, Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob, and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word appointed is sum, which means to set or ordain or to constitute or establish. This verse again states that God ordained and established an unwaverable standard, the laws of nature, that were set in motion when the universe was created. Psalm 74 and 16 says, The day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. The word prepared is kun, and it means to be fixed, to be stable and unchangeable, or to be established. The word light is maor, which means all transmitted light and brightness. This verse unequivocally states that the natural laws governing the speed of light is the same today as it was at the beginning. There are more scriptures that talk about God's strict laws of nature, but here we have presented three verses that tell us that God created light at its current speed, and that speed has been consistent since the creation. The young earth teachers are unable to find one verse that states otherwise. In fact, they don't even try. Jason Lyle is wrong. Since we've determined that the speed of light has always been the same, and the universe is created all at the same time, then the distance of each star from the Earth should determine what period of time we are observing on that star. For instance, the Earth and two galaxies were created at the same time. Galaxy number one is one million light years away. Galaxy number two is 10 million light years away. In exactly one million years, we would start seeing the light from the galaxy number one. It would take another nine million years to see the light from galaxy number two. By then we have already been watching galaxy number one age for nine million years. Although both stars were created at the same time, here on Earth we are seeing a brand new galaxy and a galaxy nine million years old. Scientists using good science have determined how galaxies age by comparing those close to Earth with those billions of light years away. And they have determined something very interesting, as explained by Dr. Hugh Ross, a Christian astrophysicist. What shows us when we look at great distances, say 5 billion, 10 billion light years away, 
we see that the galaxies are jammed much more tightly together, telling us we're looking at a universe that is much smaller than the universe that we see today. But something else we observe is that galaxies far away are very different from galaxies up close. They look much younger than the galaxies up close. Uh, we see many more spiral galaxies. You look far enough away, 50% of the galaxies are spiral. Uh, whereas right now, only 6% of the galaxies are spiral. As the universe ages, we see this spiral structure uh, decaying with respect to time. Then the galaxies that are spiral, we see that the far away, they're free of spurs and feathers. Whereas the ones that are up close, we see these furs and, and feathers, which is basically what I would call frayed galaxies. The galaxies have the appearance of being frayed uh, like an old piece of cloth. I mean, it gets worn and it starts to fray. We see that in the galaxies. And then we can use the velocity of light to tell us how far back in time we're looking. And it tells us that we're seeing a universe that is continuously growing over the past 14 billion years, not only continuously growing, continuously aging. There is evidence in the Bible that the light we are seeing from stars extreme distances away is much younger than light we are seeing from stars that are close, exactly as Hugh Ross explained. And it was likely that the Apostle Paul didn't fully understand the real meaning of the inspired words that he wrote about our universe. Paul wrote in Hebrews 1 and 10, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. The word heavens is uranos, which means the vaulted expanse of the sky with all things visible in it. The term wax old is palayo, which means to become old and worn out. What happens when a cloth garment becomes old and worn? It becomes frayed. The edges become tattered and worn, exactly like the old galaxies described by Hugh Ross. This proves one thing. We are seeing the light from galaxies different distances from Earth at the speed that light was created when it left those galaxies. To demonstrate how ridiculous Jason Lyle's claim is, we would have to show that God created different speeds in the light from different stars in order for all of them to be seen on Earth at the same time. The light from a galaxy 10 million light years away would have to travel 10 times the speed of the light from a galaxy 1 million light years away in order for the light from each galaxy to reach Earth for Adam to see on day 4. The dwarf galaxy, Sagittarius, is only 60,000 light years away. So that light only had to be accelerated over the 60,000 light year distance, much slower than galaxies billions of light years away. So light headed towards Earth from billions of stars and galaxies at different distances would mean that God would have to change billions of light speeds in order for all of the stars to be seen by Adam on day four. Find that in the scriptures somewhere. Psalm 19 and 1 reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The word heavens is shameim which means the visible heavens or the visible universe. It also means abode of the stars. The word showeth is nokad, which means to inform of, to declare, or made known. The word handiwork is maesa, which simply means the work of God. The creator of the heavens has made it possible for us to learn with good science many of the secrets of the universe. He has given us information in his word describing his creation. The young earth creationist's refusal to acknowledge any reliable scientific evidence that proves our universe is billions of years old has limited their knowledge to a few misinterpreted Bible passages which they proclaim to their followers proves our earth is only 6,000 years old. Whether their teachings are out of ignorance or motivated by an attempt to keep their movement alive, they continue to deceive their following by modifying God's word, promoting a bogus science, and convincing their followers that they are right and everyone else is wrong. And their followers sit in the audience and nod their heads in approval.